back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So today I have a special guest with me. This is my friend Maddie who has a YouTube channel called Maddie Reads. I will put a link to her channel down below. Go and check her out. She's fairly new to YouTube mm -hmm. but she is loving booktube. I am. So very exciting stuff. She's one of my only in real life friends who actually reads a lot. So we have lots of stuff in common and today we thought we'd do a tag video. So I decided to do the spring reading tag which I saw on Mercedes channel. I wasn't tagged but it seemed like a good one and it is springtime so it seemed very apt and yeah let's just dive straight on in. Question number one. What books are you most excited to read over the next few months? Blood Upon the Sand by Bradley Bolio. I'm 100 pages off finishing 12 Kings yes. which is the first book in this series. I am loving it so far so I wanted to get straight onto it so yeah that's why I'm really looking forward to that massive this tome. One, this massive one, yeah. <laughs> Books I am most excited to read over the next few months. I haven't chosen one book. Oh, you told me you chose one book. No, I no, I didn't. I said choose a theme, <laughs> and that's what I've done. Oh. So I uh, am going to try and read more of my SF masterworks because I have neglected them slightly. I'm also going to really try and read all the Mothbox books and the Book Buddy Box books that I've been sent that I haven't got to yet because there are a few of them. I've read some of them, but I haven't read all of them. And there's a few of them that I'm really excited about and I just haven't made the time for them yet. So I'm gonna read some of those. That is my plan. Read more of the things that I said I'm gonna read like subscription boxes and SF Masterworks. Question two. two. What book makes you think of spring for whatever reason? Mm. Well, I chose... Mm. I didn't premeditate this answer. <laughs> I chose the two books from Sarah J Maas's um, Court of Thorns and Roses and the Court of Mist and Fury. The main place that's it's based in is Spring Court and then there's other courts as well which are also either named after a season or a time of the day. Yeah, that's why I chose this one. Very cunning, in. very yeah. cunning. Got spring in the spring name. Spring in the... Cheating. <laughs> well no, the weather's always spring. So my choice is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien which some of you may be surprised by given my lack of interest in The Lord of the Rings and how much I'm disliking it. Well, not disliking it, it's just okay. It's it's just okay. So Overhyped. the fact that I've got The Hobbit in here as a book I actually liked might surprise you, but I did like this one because I felt like it was the right size for what it was and I loved the descriptions of the Shire and the Hobbits and that felt very springtime to me. They are always kind of preparing parties like you do in spring, summer and having like outdoor picnics and Get gatherings at each other's houses and big birthday parties and things like I really enjoy the Shire as a place it seems to be eternally spring there which is quite cool so definitely a springtime kind of book this was really hard for me to decide because most of the books I read are evil cold horrible Winter. wintery places so winter is coming <laughs> winter is always there oh actually yeah you didn't Game of Thrones because that's never actually winter is it well, it's not really is spring coming. though, is it? It's like no, it's more summer. Autumn. Or... <laughs> it's only summer Slunch. or winter, isn't it? Yeah. So, The Hobbit. <laughs> Question three. The days are getting longer. What is the longest book you've ever read? Well, on my Goodreads, it's War and Peace with 1,392 pages. The edition that I read was only around 990, and I think it's because one that I read was the BBC adaptation one, so it had the cover of the TV programme yeah. and the writing was just so small. <laughs> Tiny. It took me three months to read it, not because it was so long, but because the writing was so small. But was it good? It was very good. Yeah. That's good then. If you're Worth reading it. it, crack on with it, because it's really good. <laughs> Get going. Get going. <laughs> okay, longest book I've ever read is apparently this one. It is... Otherland, book number four, Sea of Silver Light by Tad Williams. It's got a lovely shiny cover and I adored this book. It is the final one in the series and it brings everything together in one of the most amazing endings I've ever seen. However, I do think this is a series that not everyone is going to like because it is a commitment. As it you is. can see, all of the books are big. This one's the longest. It is 1,265 pages. 
and I read it all and I loved it all and I would recommend the series but I've done a full review of the series so I will link that for you to find out more. It's very in the same vein as Ready Player One so if you like that you'll probably like this but it's a lot bigger and a lot more epic and a lot more fantasy meets sci-fi. Number four, what book would you recommend to brighten someone's day? See I find this very hard. Yeah, we don't like bright books. No. Well, colour, yes. Colour. Bright tone, no. I like my books to be gritty. evil, gritty, nasty, Weird. filled with death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> loads and loads of death. <laughs> Lots of death, yeah. Um, <laughs> you can't, you can't maybe have, we should revise our yeah. opinion on books. You can't have fantasy without death, can you really? Well, no, I think it's yeah. a requirement. Yeah. Or a risk of death, for sure. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, fantasy is a hard one to uh, brighten someone's day. I mean, there are all there are so many bits of books that I could be like, oh, this bit's great, but for a whole book, mm. it was tricky. So, what did you go with? I went with Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. It's a very bright cover as well. It is a very bright cover. I've owned it for about three years, and I haven't read <gasps> it yet. Has it been out three years? I've owned it for as long as it's been out, I think. So, so let's see. It's two thousand and thirteen. So. Anyway, I've owned it for a while, but I haven't got to it yet. But you liked it, clearly. Yes, I read it during... Tell me why I should get to it and why it would brighten my day. Because <laughs> um, I read it while I was at uni. And this book is set in uni. It's about a set of twins. Um, one of them is very popular. Other one is very quiet and shy and reserved. And what I like about Rainbow Round, even though it's the only book that I've read of hers, I know that other, other, other books have it. She has, like, prose as well as then something else. So with this, it was um, the main character, Kath's um, fan fiction. Okay. So it had fan fiction, which was also turned into Carry On, which I think... Yeah, I have read Carry On. I love yes. Carry On, actually. So, um, yeah, that's... This is initiated what Carry On, because everyone yeah, likes I the fan fiction. I should read it, really, shouldn't I? Yeah. It's just the word contemporary. <laughs> yes, it is contemporary. But I'm, I feel like I would like it, so I do. I have yeah. kept it for all these years. <laughs> I just love... Kath's relationship that she has with both of her, both her sister, which which starts quite rocky, but then at the end, you know, best of friends, and then also her relationship with her love interest Levi. Mm. So yeah, it will. I will. I will get to day. it at some point. Yeah. Okay, my book pitch. Why this would brighten your day? Because you haven't read this one, have no, you? I've not read this one. This is Jodie Taylor's Just One Damn Thing After Another, which I think instantly is a great title straight away. This is the story of time-travelling historians who all live together and go back in history to some of the great events from the past, such as the Roman invasion, such as the Battle of Hastings, anything that's a big event in history that you can think of, War of the Roses, stuff like that, they will go back and they'll investigate what really happened. Because everyone knows that through history things get twisted and we don't always know the truth. And of course the victors are always the ones who write what really happens, but not what really happens. So they go back and they investigate what actually happened. And it's very British. There's a lot of tea drinking. There's a lot of biscuits. There's a lot of very British dry humour jokes which are fantastic. And I think you'd really like it. So I would recommend this. And it makes me smile so much. I've just finished reading the eighth one in the series. <laughs> it's blooming amazing. And a lot of these are free on Kindle or very, very cheap on Audible. So I would recommend them because it's a small press published series. So it's quite small, but she is very beloved. And I love this series. I'm very, very good. I'm very patriotic, so I think I like it. <laughs> it's not so much like queens and stuff. It's just no. very British. Yes, that's what I mean, like very British. British. Yeah. Number five is some question about imagining books, which I'm not going to answer because I think it's a bit of a rubbish question. Mm. I'll link it below if you want to see the question, but yeah, I'm not going to answer it. We're I not just authors, think it's... so... Yeah, it's weird. Well, not yet. So. Well, I'm not. I've got no intention of being one, but you can be an author. <laughs> Number six. Spring is also a time of growth. How has your reading changed over the years? Big, loaded question. <laughs> How has your reading changed over the years? Well... It has, because I've started to read more than one book at one time. It's good, yeah. I used to read... Progress. When I was when I was a child, I used to read more than one book at a time. Oh, I didn't. And then during high school, I used to read one book, and I just couldn't get into the second book when I was reading another one. 
Mm. But only very recently, since last year, I've read more than one. I'm reading three books at the same time. Slowly getting there. You're upgrading. I'm upgrading, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think I... When I was a kid, I didn't read more than one book at once, but I read them so fast that it was almost like I was because I was just powering through them. But they were really short. When you look mm. at kids' books, you're like, how did that take you so long? Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, hundred pages or something. So I only read one when I was younger, mainly because I was only allowed to get like five out of the library or something. So I just read them back to back. Um, didn't have a big bookshelf when I was younger. Obviously, that's changed. <laughs> Isn't that something that has changed? Yes. <laughs> I've managed to get bookshelves. Um, I now read many books at once. I think at the moment I'm reading about seven, which is kind of my average. Um, that sounds ludicrous, but it's usually because I have a few that are kind of on the back burner, but I'm enjoying them enough to keep them on my currently reading list. I have an audiobook at all times. Um, usually I have a few physical books on the go but there'll be different genres, so I'll have a sci-fi and a fantasy, or I'll have a steampunk and a fantasy, or I'll mix and match something. So I read lots at the same time, sometimes a non-fiction as well, slips in, yeah, or novellas as well, got a few of them. Basically everything, um, but as long as I'm not reading two things that are too similar, so I wouldn't read two epic fantasies at the same time, because mm. that would get a little confusing, yeah. but I'd probably be able to do it, I just don't think I'd enjoy them as much because I'd get confused, so. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I don't really read many books in time because I feel I might lose track of, like, characters. Yeah, and you've got to have different to. types, I think, otherwise it doesn't yeah. work so well. So, reading tastes. We've upgraded, basically. Yes. Number seven, we're a couple of months into the new year. How is your reading going? Um, not well. <laughs> um, not well. Mine's going pretty well. I haven't had as many five star books this year, but I think that's because I'm being quite critical and I'm trying to find amazing, amazing, mind blowing books to give my five stars to rather than just a book that I love. Even if it's good, there's always something that I could improve on. So I'm trying to be a bit less generous with my five stars this year, which means there's a lot more four stars and three stars than the previous years. But also the five star books I know are going to stay with me because they're really really great and I think I've only given out four so far and I've read 70 no 80 books this year so far <laughs> <laughs> should I have let you go first I obviously don't read as much as Caitlin who does yeah who does like 80 books ready I'm um, obviously insane I have a yeah. long commute I listen to a lot of audiobooks that's the way to do it yeah because um, I'm behind schedule on my reading. Um, How could you be behind? I couldn't do that, I the no pressure. I've got no time to read. <laughs> my reading goal was 60 books this year, because I got to 64 last year, which was over my goal of 50. Nice, nice. Um, oh, I'm on 12. That's not bad. I don't know why people say... A lot of people comment on my videos and they're like, how do you read so much? I feel so bad that yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm really bad. Like, but... I love reading. I'm just... It's just because I'm a maniac. <laughs> I just am a reading fiend. I will happily stay up until three in the morning oh, knowing I have to get up until f at 5.30 just because the book is really good and I don't go out with friends very often and when I do I come back home and I read straight after even if I say I'm going to bed. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, this happened the other day. I just, I don't do a lot of stuff besides reading and I make it a huge priority so I don't spend a huge amount of time with my family. Like when they're downstairs I'm up here reading and I mean I do on the weekends but not, you know, any other time. Mm. <laughs> I just try and make it my life, which it kind of is. Um, and because I've got publishers sending me things I get really excited about stuff. I really want to be reviewing and making videos and I think any amount of reading is good though. I think if you're reading at all, that is to be praised and that is to be something that a lot of people can't do or won't do or make excuses about. And if you have any books under your belt by this time of the year, that's pretty impressive. Like you said, War and Peace took you three months. Mm -hmm. That's a big book that could take people years. It doesn't mm. matter how long it takes you as long as you're enjoying what you're reading and you're reading. That's what I say. So yeah, next one. Number eight, final question. What are you looking forward to in the next few months? Any plans? I haven't got any plans with reading, but I have got a lot of books this year coming out. So I've got that's always the exciting. New Court of, Court of um, Ring, Wings and Ruin by Sarah Jane Yeah, Mars. I've pre-ordered that. Pre-ordered that. 
Um, I just received Waking Giants by Silver and New Nouvelle. Nouvelle. I haven't got that one yet. I need to get yeah. that. That's really the new Robin Hood book. Robin Hood, yeah. Um, I haven't started excited. her. I've got a few on my Kindle, but I haven't started her yet. Um, oh, so excited. Robin Hood. Pierce Brown, August, Iron Gold. Yeah. Like There's the final one in the Demon Cycle series by Peter B. Brett coming out. Very excited for that. You read this. I read the first book, yeah, and I haven't got around to it. read the rest. Read well, yeah. I think I'm going to re reread it though, because that was in college and that was one I think the next Brent Weeks book is coming out. I think Lies of Luck Lamora number four may come out, possibly. We don't know. Uh, the next George Sanderson. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a yeah. no. <laughs> Sanderson, Oathbreaker, Stormlight Archive 3 coming out. So that's quite a few big things yeah. happening this year that I'm excited about. A lot of them in the second half of the year. So I will be doing a video sort of doing my like anticipated releases then. Because I've already done one for the first mm. half, although I've added quite a lot to it since then. <laughs> Lots of good releases, definitely. I'm excited for all the events I've got coming up. I have a book event on Thursday. I have two in May that are meeting authors, which I'm very excited about, Robin Hobb. And I'm going to go to... Galantz Fest probably, they've just announced the dates for that. I'm going to Nine Worlds, I'm going to Worldcon. I'll be going to lots of things <laughs> and I'm very excited for all of them, particularly Worldcon I think and Nine Worlds. But yeah, loads of good things coming up and I can't wait. So I think it's going to be good. So that, my friends, is the first tag I've done in ages. <laughs> the spring reading tag. Um, I will link the creators and I will link all the others bits and bobs like questions down below. I'll also link Mercedes and Maddie, so go and check them both out, particularly Maddie, because she's in this video. Mercedes, you weren't here, so you <laughs> don't get a shout. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Hopefully you'll see more of her now that she's agreed to do some videos. Yeah. I'm sure we will. And yeah, let us know if you have anything else you want us to do. Thank you all for watching. Leave us all your answers to the questions in the comments, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Bye! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book Then come back and chat with me again